Hello my friends, welcome to another Cyanate video. In this one we're going to be looking at nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. It is only in physics in separate sciences, it's not in combined science. We're going to just quickly look at nuclear fission first and nuclear fusion. They're both wonderfully simple processes but quite tricky to control. Let's get to it. So nuclear fission to begin with is where we are splitting things. Fission means splitting and fusion means combining. So we're looking at two nuclear processes here. One is splitting of large nuclei into smaller ones and fusion is combining of small ones into larger ones. So what we need to begin with here is we need a large unstable nucleus. So unstable usually are the ones that are radioactive or they have isotopes that are radioactive but usually very large. Uh, the larger the more unstable they are. So let's call it uranium for example. And uranium here can be unsettled even more. We can cause it to unsettle and cause it to split by firing a high energy neutron at it. So it needs to be triggered fission. It won't just happen spontaneously. It needs to have um, a, a trigger. So that's where we have this neutron fired into the large unstable nucleus. And that neutron is absorbed into this nu nucleus. And that's a really key word. Examiners will look for that word absorbed. And as this neutron is absorbed, it causes the nucleus to just shatter. And when it shatters, it splits almost in two usually on average it's in two of fairly equal halves but as it also shatters it will also release shrapnel so it causes two products in the form of smaller nuclei and it causes other tiny bits of shrapnel in the form of neutrons to be released now it's typically three neutrons that are released it could be two a, a bit like an explosion we're not really sure what's going to be fired out in what direction um but on average that's what we see and these neutrons can go on to then collide and be absorbed by other unstable large nuclei and you can see this causes a chain reaction so once we've started one of these reactions it can cause a chain reaction and very quickly release a lot of energy because these neutrons have a really high kinetic energy they're moving very fast so they are carrying a lot of energy and that that transfer of energy the energy being released is is high really high in this reaction so nuclear fission is used at the moment in nuclear reactors it's also used in um, some nuclear weapons in its efficient process the splitting of large unstable nuclei easily started and actually we can control it fairly well too because what we can do is we can actually provide um, something that will absorb the neutrons instead of other atoms of a nuclei and what we do is we put in a, a carbon rod in nuclear reactors and we can lower that down into the reaction chamber where these neutrons are then absorbed and they won't then go on to collide with other uh, unstable nuclei and it will slow down the reaction eventually we can even stop the reaction um, so these are carbon rods and they will absorb those neutrons that are firing around now, in a nuclear reactor, as we say, these are what we call a controlled chain reaction. Um, but in a nuclear weapon, we have an uncontrolled chain reaction. We want this to just go crazy and release loads and loads of energy um, very, very quickly. Now, as much as we have these very high energy nuclei and neutrons, we haven't really talked about the radioactive part of nuclear fission. Because here at the moment, we've just got high energy uh, subatomic particles and nuclei. What's also getting released here are packets of energy in the form of gamma waves, gamma rays. And these gamma ray rays are obviously gamma radiation. So as a result of this split, we've got high energy packets called photons of gamma radiation. So to summarize, we're taking a large unstable nucleus, we're firing a neutron at it, and as that is then absorbed, it causes the nucleus to split, and we get two smaller nuclei about the same size as each other. We then get two or three um, neutrons being released. Again, that's typical. Um, and we finally also get gamma rays 
being released or gamma waves or photons um, and that's the radioactive energy that's being released and you've learned about radioactivity and alpha beta and gamma previously so we're getting some of these being released too nuclear fusion on the other hand is much simpler in what we need to really understand and what we need to know we need, don't need to be able to draw this one out nuclear fission you have to be able to draw out the a diagram to represent what's happening to the large nuclei and what products are coming off and how it causes a chain reaction. For fusion, the knowledge we need is just a simple couple of sentences. So fission was splitting a large unstable nucleus. In fusion, we are joining. If you think of fusion, it is joining of things together, fusing them together. And so the definition is the fusing or joining of two light nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. So these are obviously small, and we're creating a larger nucleus. Now, let's look at the example first before we get onto that second statement. So in an example here, we have uh, hydrogen. Let's call it uh, a slightly different version of hydrogen that you'd be used to. You'd perhaps be used to um, hydrogen that has a massive one and just one proton. In this case, we're taking deuterium, which is hydrogen and in a different form, an isotope that has a mass of two, but a proton number of one. So it has one neutron and one proton. And we're going to fuse it with another hydrogen that has a mass of three. It has one proton, but two neutrons. And by combining these two together with a lot of energy, it needs a serious amount of energy for this to happen. Um, we're combining two nuclei together. It, it, phenomenal amount of energy to overcome the forces that exist to keep, that keep them apart. So by doing that, they create a new balance, a new stability. And in that new stability, in this case, we have an atom formed that has a proton number of two, so it must be helium, but it has a mass number of five. So that's an example of nuclear fusion. There are lots and lots and lots of examples of this that can happen, but in essence, what you need to know is just that nuclear fusion is a joining of two light nuclei to form a heavier nucleus. And this can happen um, in multiple ways, usually in stars, in stars we get small atoms, sorry, small nuclei, you've got to use the word nuclei, I'll make a point of that now, small nuclei fusing together to make larger nuclei. And in a supernova, in supernovae, you have a lot of energy being released as a star explodes and it causes a huge amount of energy to be present and it can cause larger nuclei to fuse together to make some of the even larger atoms that we know about and elements that we know about that we see on our planet, like uranium. A phenomenal amount of energy is needed for that to happen. So how we get these large atoms, large elements in, in the universe is through these huge energy, um, the huge events that release so much energy that this can then happen in. But the second statement that we need to know is that in this process, some of the mass may be converted into the energy of radiation, which is a very weird concept. And you don't need to understand the for how and the why, um, but it goes back to some brilliant work by Einstein, which shows that energy and mass can be interrelated and are kind of the same thing. Um, so in this reaction, because so much energy is being released and so much energy is required that as a result of it happening, um, actually the mass, total mass of this atom ends up being less of the total of this because we're releasing um, energy in the form of radiation. So we're releasing so much energy here that the mass of the product that we get, the helium, is actually less than the sum of the reactants. And that's why this process releases so much energy. And we're trying to work on using nuclear fusion sensibly in reactors. Um, we're not quite there yet, but if we do get nuclear fusion working as a process to provide electricity, uh, energy problems will be solved for a, a while at least. And they're also used in nuclear bombs. Sometimes nuclear bombs use nuclear fission and fusion, and they have different parts to them. Um, and nuclear fusion is part of that. But it, that's it for today. If you've got any questions or queries about any of what we've seen or you find anything that's cool, do to stick it in the comments below. Do like for um, showing that this is helpful and helping other people to find it too. And uh, subscribe if you would like to find more of my videos. Cheers!